Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animal Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today on the table from Iconics, the USS Theodore Roosevelt Aircraft Carrier. And I've recently built the USS Missouri and I had a lot of fun doing that so I'm kind of pumped up and ready to put this together. Been putting off a little bit too long, time to open this up. I understand that uh, Obviously, you can see in the picture there's a lot of tiny little planes, and I seem to remember a few comments about how much fun or possibly frustrating those could be. Well, let's open this up, see what's inside, and take a look at it for myself. Let's put it together. Time to open the Roosevelt. Do we have any tape? Of course we do. Alrighty. Sheets and instructions and tools. Another pair of tweezers to add to my collection. We have one piece of paper for the instructions, two pieces of paper. Put that to the side. And we have a piece of tape holding this on that's not much of a knife if it doesn't want to cut okay. a little bit of tape residue there not cool to grab the alcohol pad Two metal sheets of parts. Well, this doesn't look like it's quite as big as the Missouri. I'm sorry. Still be a fun build. There's the deck right there. So, not quite as big, but still decent size. Set this over here and grab the first sheet of instructions. Put my pokey sharpie away. Open this up. And this is, there we go. Open it up to pages one and two. A little room here. And similar to the Metal Earth models, but slightly different being Iconics. We have start of the sheet, Iconics logo, the Metal Earth logo, a bit about the 360 view and the web address to get to the 360 view if you want to see a completed model to help just figure out where parts go because they can be helpful sometimes. And I'm just going to kind of try to go over this quickly because I'm, I'm going to assume by this point you've got some experience with these metal models because this is a little bit more advanced than just your standard model. So. Here we've got the two metal sheets, a layout of them, and I'll just grab one as an example. So you can see all the part numbers are listed so you can find the parts on the sheet. We've got both sheets listed, some notes here and there. You slide over to page two, a picture of the actual kit and a QR code you can scan to get to the 360 view. And some notes, indication of what the tabs are, the slots are, and the fold lines are. Legend, E points at a grave side, and E points at a non-engraved side. This is trying to draw your attention to something. Usually how something aligns. Make sure you put the parts together this way kind of thing. Blue circle, and you see that by a connection point, means to fold over a tab. Green triangle means to twist the tab. Assembly tips and tools that you can use. And then below, below that, we have the start of the assembly steps, or assembly flowchart as it's sometimes referred to. Step one. You've got part one here, you shape it like that. Part two, you shape it like that, those come together. And then part three adds on to that. Over here, you've got part four and five. Here's a little sub-assembly showing four and five times two coming together, how they shape to make that. These come together and you end up with that. 
And then you jump on to step two and just follow the arrows and the sub-assemblies, putting the parts and folding and shaping and adding them together. And then down to the next one, flip over to page three to continue on. And it's pretty much much of the same. Just follow the assembly steps, just shape, bend, and assemble the model. Then on to page four, and once you're finished with that, we jump to page five. which is on the next piece of paper. Page five, page six, page seven, and then page eight. And once you get to the bottom, well, you're finished with your model here. And then it's time to make the planes, I suppose, and add them on. Interesting. I guess the planes just sit on top. They don't actually fasten down. Interesting. Did not realize that. So you finish with the model here, and then down here you add the planes to put on top. So the planes just kind of just kind of sit there. Let's take a moment to talk about tools. This is a very basic set of tools that I use in pretty much every build. I've got a very standard set of tweezers that I use very frequently. I've got some precision tweezers, a, another flat set here, and a couple of pointed tweezers, one of which I've ground the tip down just a bit to make it a little flatter for grabbing tabs. I have clippers that I use to get the parts off of the sheets quickly and easily. It's better than bending and trying to break them off. And then a couple of different pliers, a flat nose set and a long needle nose pliers set. They come in handy for bending in different situations. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. I have a sculpting set here that I occasionally use and they have all kinds of different shaped ends on them. Some flat, some angled, some spoon. There's a couple of hooks. They're useful for reaching in and bending and pushing and pulling tabs and shaping parts from the inside. I don't use these very often, but they sometimes come in quite handy. They're angled needle nose pliers, and I typically use them for one of two reasons. Either getting into a strange shaped area to twist a tab because of the angle. More frequently though, I use them to fold over flaps along bases or side of parts that are too long for the flat nose pliers, but needle nose pliers can't get to them safely without bending or warping something else. These will grab a longer area and bend it over. I've talked about some tools. I've got basics to get me started. I've got the metal sheets and the instructions ready to go. Let's put this together.
These narrow little side pieces that fold down are hard to grab onto, which seems to be a recurring issue with this model. I am once again having trouble with thin, hard to hold on to, folded over sides. Some of these thin sides are long, too long for the tools I have. I just have to be patient and work my way back and forth across the part, bending a little at a time, trying not to warp the area. I waited to fold close part 12 until after attaching parts 13 and 14. I would have attached more parts first, but part 15 required part 12 to be closed.
Part 15 either didn't want to cooperate or is just not that great of a design. It did not seem to want to fold up to the correct shape. Perhaps I didn't do something quite right. It took me some time to work out, double check, and be sure which tabs went into which slots here. The instructions do not make it quite clear. I spent time test fitting parts to be sure. The tabs on part 12 go through the two slots forward and rear that are closer to the center of parts 18. Then the previous assembly with antennas attaches to part 18 through the two tabs. One forward and one rear that are closer to the edge as well as one tab on the side. Also, one tab comes out in a nearly hidden spot above and slightly inside part 15. You might have to open up or fold part 15 out of the way a little to get to the tab. There's not much room to twist tabs in here. I mostly press them over. One of the antennas fell off as I was attaching the assemblies. Looks like I will be gluing that back on later. It really stinks that there are so many long thin areas like these that need bending over. It is very difficult to do without warping things. I have some tools that will help, but not in these tight areas. I will just have to slowly work my way back and forth bending a little at a time.
The next six parts are more side pieces that need the edge folded up, with a couple of exceptions of part 22 and 26, which need a little bit of shaping. I will skip folding up the other parts to save time and just show 22 and 26. Yes, I am folding this part the wrong way. I'll figure it out in just a bit. Unfortunately, nothing broke, but when I tried to fold over the tabs to secure the part, the entire thing wanted to flex, threatening to break, so I twisted the tabs to keep from breaking the part. Here is a trick I have not used in a while. Since this is a bigger open long piece, I use the table to bend it over.
The instructions indicate to twist the tabs holding on part 35, but I elected to fold them instead to make sure there was enough room for part 34 to close up properly. I should not have twisted these tabs, there is just not enough room. Thank you. 
had a difficult time getting the tabs on part 40 into the slots on part 41. It seems as if these slots were not spaced far enough apart. At this point, I am starting to feel like there are some design flaws in this model. I was not paying sufficient attention here and ended up folding parts 36 and 46 inside out. For these parts where a tab or a side folds over and the main part is real thin, I decided to start holding the extra thin part with tweezers and bending the side piece with my fingers. That way, I help keep the side or the thin area of the arm from twisting. Part 50 had me scratching my head just a little. One end bends over an odd angle, but the other end bends more than 90 degree angle, or so it seems. At first, I thought I must be doing something wrong, and then getting part 51 in place was another small puzzle, but I managed to work it out. I used a stack of tiny magnets to help guide the part and one tab into place, then worked the other tab over into its place with my finger.
I am bending a couple of the angle tabs straight so they line up with the slot. Here's where I realized I had folded these oblong shapes inside out. I'm going to cut out the part of the video where I fix them and save some time. Many of the parts on the sides are tightly fit together. These two parts fit together in an odd offset sort of way. Fifty nine is another oddly shaped part. It didn't quite make sense to me, but I shaped it according to the directions and the placement of the slots and tabs as best I could.
These tabs are so close together I decided to wedge my tools between the tabs to push the tabs apart and over.
Time to put the bottom on. As usual, I'm pretty much taking it one tab at a time. I tried multiple times to get this one tab lined up and through its slot, but it was pretty much impossible to clearly see which way to push or bend the tabs to line it up. I eventually gave up, ignoring the tab and moving on to securing others.
I had a tough time getting the tail fins to push up and into place without bending the entire tail on this particular plane. There was only one AWACS plane, the rest of the planes have several copies. I'm just going to show one assembly per model of plane. Folding the other half of the helicopter is hard to describe. It doesn't just fold over flat like you might expect. It kind of lays over the angled out sections, leaving a gap between most of it, but narrowing towards the back. All right, here we go. This is the part where I normally hold up the model and do something like ta-da or presenting or I give to you. Uh, this one's going to be tricky because she crumbles here. I present to you the USS Theodore Roosevelt aircraft character carrier with the planes trying to slide and fall off and the helicopter is falling over. And there you go. I'm just going to put this down on my little shelf over here before the planes start falling. Because, oh boy. So, yes, if you're wondering, my hands do shake a little bit. It is a side effect of the anti rejection meds that keep my heart from being rejected. And, well, I haven't let that stop me. I just keep on, keep on going. But anyway, this was an interesting and different sort of challenge. And I feel I should start off by saying that... Coming into this model, I guess I had some expectations and, and, and preconceptions about how this was going to go. 
and I'm, I realize that in a small part I'm reaching a certain amount of arrogance with these models. I've done close to, well, I've probably done 200, close to close to 200 unique models, uh, these metal 3D metal models, and there's a certain amount of arrogance that comes with that. Hey, I can do this, no problem. I've got this, and I I do try and fight with that, and it causes me to make mistakes. But I use those mistakes as an advantage to show you what you could easily mess up and how to avoid it. But there's also, I've made, the main thing is I've made two battleships so far. I've made the Arizona and the Missouri ones, Metal Earth ones, Iconics. And I've, I am somewhat familiar with battleships because I have been on the deck of a battleship. I've, I've visited the USS North Carolina. I was very fascinated with it when I was younger. But I'm not a military person and I'm not highly familiar with military aircraft, Navy craft, you know, ship, planes, that sort of stuff. I have some knowledge, but limited knowledge. But I expected the Arizona to be very much like any other naval ship that I've built, like the USS North Carolina or the Arizona, because I have built the USS North Carolina plastic model back in the day, or the Arizona or the Missouri. And it's a very different ship, which is, you know, shouldn't be any big surprise. And there's a lot of things I didn't expect that kind of had me scratching my head. How does this part work? How does that part work? I expect a lot of similar deck work and, and the decks above deck on this ship are, are not a lot and not to the degree of a battleship. A lot of things are off the side and very different. So that may have tainted, that preconception and expectation may have tainted you know what I was feeling as I was building the model and some of the commentary I made as I was building it as far as shapes not making sense. If I were more familiar with this ship they probably would have made a lot of sense. So bear that in mind when watching and thinking about the, the reviews I've made so far in this video, some of that may have been a little bit tainted by my expectation. Now, since it's been a couple of days since I've built this model, because it takes time to edit the video and get to this point, and it also gives me a chance to reflect, overall I'm very happy with this model. I very much enjoyed it. It was an interesting challenge. Uh, it challenged my conceptions of what I expected, and I had to alter those, so it was intellectually fun to kind of stretch my mind and have to learn to come about it in a different way and keep exercise the idea that don't get too arrogant about what you expect because things are different so it was it was overall an enjoyable build without going too much into psychological depth about this build i enjoyed it and i'm i'm very pleased with the final results and any frustrations i had during building it are forgotten about at this point it was well worth it really like this build you know, a little bit disappointed it's not as humongous looking as the Arizona, but I'm sure at the time, because this came out before the Arizona, it was very big for its time, and it's, you know, it's a very different model. So, not, not disappointed. Overall, very happy, very pleased with it. Now, this build, just the ship itself, the first part, took me four hours, almost on the dot, according to the recorded footage, to put together. The planes took an extra 40 minutes. Now, I did every one every plane that's on the sheets. I clipped them all out, I shaped them all. You know, I only showed one build per in the video, but I made them all and that took me 40 minutes. Now, it's your ship. You put whatever planes on it you want. One of the beauties of this, so you don't have to do all 40. You cut out and shape whatever you want to put on display with yours. You can build them all, you can build just certain kinds, display them how you want, put them on the side, hang them from the ceiling, whatever you want to do. Add them to something else. You know, put a little wire and have them circling. Go, go get you some Tenyo Japanese models and have them circling. And I don't know, whatever. My mind is going a little crazy here. But, you know, that, that's what it took for me to build it, the whole thing. I, I figured I might as well do the whole thing for this video. Thought about just doing a few, but had to go the whole line. Now, having said all that, there is one criticism I still feel fairly comfortable making because I don't feel it's affected by... Uh, preconceptions of this model. There are a lot of long thin sides, which I realize they have to be there. They're part of the detail and this is an Iconics model. You want to add more detail since you have a larger size. They have to be there. But one thing I've noticed with some of the newer models, this being an exception that, that Metal Earth and Iconics have done, is with long thin pieces that have to be folded up, they split them up in, in some models. And I appreciate it when they do that because they're more of the size of the tools that are readily available, the tools that Fascinations themselves sell to build these models. So you can easily bend up those sections without warping anything, make sure they're lined up, 
and there you go. With these long thin sides, it's hard to find an effective tool that will easily fold all of them up at once. Forgive the loud vehicle going by. It's easy to fold them, not easy to fold it all up at once without warping the part, and I definitely fought with that, and there was one piece in particular that I had a lot of trouble with. With It's gonna warp. When you're talking about a long thin piece that you don't have a tool to just bend the whole thing. Now you can get a tool for a photo etching, for bending those parts that, that locks down long pieces that lets you fold them up evenly. That is available, it is kind of expensive, but it is something you could use in this. But for the most part, most people aren't going to have that and may not want to invest in that just to build a few models. So, yeah, I appreciate that they cut them up and make it easier for the average tool user, the average user's tools, I should say, to be able to fold it up those long, thin pieces. It's just really difficult to do with most tools without warping it. You're probably going to warp it, and I did with mine. So that's my one chief complaint. It would have been nice. I can definitely see the argument of those long rail sidings being split up would detract from the detail. I can see that argument. But at the same time, you know, it's give or take. I'd appreciate it making it easier to build by splitting side pieces up that are particularly long and thin and easy to warp. My one big criticism. Other than that, love this model. Really enjoyed it. Glad to have built it. Glad to have the opportunity to not only build it and make a few mistakes, but to share it with you. And speaking of that, if you enjoy these videos, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. It is with the help of Patreon supporters that I was able to get this model and many of the ones that I've done recently. Just a little bit helps. Check out the link in the description below and at the very end of this video. If you'd like to become a supporter yourself, I would appreciate it. I'm going to make these models either way, just a little limited on what I can do on my own. And I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.